Your station, your voice. BBC Radio Merseyside. Researchers at the University of Liverpool are continuing to lead the field in fighting infection. For the first time, experts from a number of different departments within the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences will work together in the newly established Institute of Infection and Global Health. The Institute will be located in a £90 million development which will enable scientists to con contribute more effectively to the major health cha challenges of the 21st century. And we can speak to Professor Tom Solomon, who's the director of the new Institute. Joins me now. Hi there, Tom. Morning. Um, how big is this then for us? Oh, it's a, it's a great development for the university and for the city as a whole. Uh, what we're doing is bringing together some of the leading infection researchers from across the campus uh, into a, a new institute. And we'll be working on a range of uh, important infections and global health problems, important both to the UK and, and uh, internationally. OK. I mean, can you give us an idea in layman's terms of, you know, the worst infections, you know, the kind of things that you're looking into? Sure. Well, well um, in Liverpool, we've, we've been leading the uh, international on a number of important infectious diseases. Uh, rotavirus is one. This is a major cause of diarrhoea particularly overseas and a major cause of children's deaths. Uh, another is brain infections. Japanese encephalitis is a mosquito-borne virus which is found all over Asia and is spreading. And these are, these are actually both diseases where we've been involved in vaccine programmes to control them. Right. And what about malaria as well? Does the, the fight yeah, go on to control that? Because that's one of the biggest killers on, on the planet. Malaria is also an, another major killer. Um, it's been in the news recently, especially with Cheryl Cole being affected. And it's actually one of a number of diseases which people can get when they're overseas on holiday or travelling and then bring back to the UK. So there's a whole range of diseases like that. Salmonella is another important one. Hasn't, hasn't that killed more than... I read some stats, I'm not sure if it's true, that malaria has killed more people than any of the than all of the wars that we've ever had on the planet put well, together. In, in fact, generally, whenever there is a war, uh, usually more people die from infectious diseases associated with that uh, and the civil disruption than, than do from bullets and bombs. Right. Yeah. And, you know, by the nature of the, the things, infections uh, mutate, don't they? And they uh, get stronger and they become resistant to medicine. So we're always chasing our tails, aren't we? Yeah, this, this is one of the things we're looking at. This is one of the things especially important in the UK where we have a lot of uh, antibiotic usage and it's important for hospital-acquired infections. It's also important for infections which are transmitted from animals to, to humans humans and uh so one of our strengths in Liverpool is we have a school of vet medicine where, again, infection is a strong strength. And people from the vet school who work in infection are being brought into this new institute, which is actually going to be put in a new building, a new £90 million building, where work has started and the first phase will be finished by July of next year. So everyone's very excited about moving into the new structure. Yeah, and in terms of jobs, will any new jobs be created as a result? Uh, yeah, there'll be a large number of jobs. Firstly, once the, once the uh, new building's finished, uh, there should be about 600 infection workers from professors down to uh, all sorts of levels of staff working in there and obviously there'll be a lot of new jobs associated with the building mm. so there's been a lot of in the news this morning you've been talking about cuts and how they're affecting libraries and, and other things museums but actually this is a, a good news story because it's a major investment from the University of Liverpool and also the UK government. Fantastic I mean in terms of uh, you know these diseases Tom and infections what would be you know if you could uh, play God and er eradicate one which would be the one you would deal with? Oof, that is a, a good question. I mean, uh, I think it, it, it. I think every infection worker will give a slightly different uh, different angle depending on on the disease they spend most time looking at. Because when you spend time with patients with these diseases, the one I've been working on mostly over the last ten years with my research group is this is this nasty, very nasty brain infection mm -hmm. called encephalitis. And I suppose for me personally, if I could if I could make a difference with any disease, it would be it would be that brain infection. And how, how does that develop then? How, how do we contract that? Well, we, we, we work, we see people with that both overseas and in this country. Uh, in, in the UK, it tends to be most often it's a herpes virus, which, as you know, is a common virus that causes a cold sore. Yeah. And in some people, instead of causing a cold sore around the lips, it actually gets into the brain and causes a fever, uh, headaches. Oh, yeah convulsions and, and coma and ultimately death in some patients. And, and should we be worried by that on Julia? I mean, it sounds obviously horrific, but uh, what, well, what's the sort of nature uh, of the spread of it? Thankfully, it's only a very small number of people uh, who become infected with herpes virus that develop the encephalitis. Um, but should we be worried? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a worry. Uh, it, it, it's especially for those people who are affected and their families. And, and that is a, is that an infection that's becoming more prevalent? Is it, is it spreading? Or? No, I think we're, we're getting better at recognising brain infections like... Uh, 
uh, encephalitis. And what we, what one of the key things we're trying to understand is of all those people who, who are infected with this virus, what determines who will develop the nasty brain infection? And if we if we understood that better, we could do something about it. Just finally, Tom, just quite interested in something you mentioned there about uh, our uh, perhaps ease of use of antibiotics or our, our reliance on antibiotics. Is this something, I mean, GPs are perhaps reluctant to prescribe them, but do we rely on them too much? Are we too quick to, to go to antibiotics? I think um, for the most part, GPs are sensible about use of antibiotics. They see a large number of patients and for the most part, they're very good at picking out which ones really have a, a bacterial infection that might respond. Um, similarly, hospital doctors uh, need to be uh, able to choose the right antibiotics for the right the right clinical situation. I think in the past, you're right, perhaps sometimes uh, people were a bit over-reliant on taking antibiotics at the first opportunity, but for the most part now, people are sensible. And do we, you know, we're always cleaning now, uh, washing our hands, using these gels. Is that uh, decreasing our ability to fight infections? Are we becoming weaker because of our obsession with cleanliness? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think gels, especially in, in hospital, it's very important for people to use gels, for, for, for medical staff to use gels between patients to make sure we don't transmit infections from one patient to another. Yeah. So for the most part, I think those are sensible things to do. Tom, thanks for coming in. Interesting talking to you. Great. That's uh, Professor Tom Solomon with good news there about a new uh, department that's opening up, a new Institute of Infection and Global Health, uh, which is going to uh, keep us at the forefront of fighting infection right here in Liverpool. Call BBC Radio Merseyside. 0151 709 9333.